Now for the center of the cross section is we have found Now the center of the cross section is this that is the CG and the ensure axis would be this will be Y and Z axis that will be your Y and Z axis okay about the CG. Now I am interested in finding IZZ moment of inertia, IZZ about the center of the cross section is what I have to find. Here what we make use of is what is called as the parallax theorem to find the moment of inertia. Okay, here I am going to use parallel axis theorem to find IZZ about the central axis. Okay. What does the parallel axis theorem state? Basically, if Y is measured about the centroid of the cross section, okay, then if I have Y which is Y centroid plus some distance Y naught okay, integral Y square D A where A is area of the cross section is given by Y centroid plus Y naught square D A right. Now, uh, y center plus y naught the whole square d a this will be nothing but integral y centroid squared d a plus y naught is a constant. So, it is y naught square integral d a area of the cross section plus 2 times y naught integral y centroid d a area of the cross section. Okay. So, this is going to be nothing but i z z over the centroid plus y naught square into area of cross section y centroid integrated over d a your axis is about the central axis. So, this term will evaluate to be 0. So, you get this term will evaluate to be 0. So, I z z about some axis is I z z about central axis plus a times y naught square. Okay. Okay. So, we will use this theorem now to find I z z of this I section. Okay. Now, I know that the C g of the bottom flange is at this point. Okay. So, and I know that I z z about I z z of the centroid of the bottom flange is 1 by 12 B f into T f cube. Okay. We saw that for a rectangular section, for rectangular section this comes from the rectangular section this is z and this is y of a centroid and if this is H and this with this B I Z Z is B H cube by 12 we saw this in the last lecture. From here I extrapolate for the bottom flange wherein the thickness now is T F and the width is B F. Okay. So, from there I get I Z Z of the bottom flange to be that and now I Z Z about the C G of the cross section for the bottom flanges, then I C Z about the C G of the cross section for the bottom flanges B H Q by 12 B T F Q by 12 that is that is about the central axis plus area of the bottom flange which is B F into T F into Y naught square would be you are what we found before the central axis is h by 2 plus t f we found that 
the centroid y centroid of the i section is h by 2 plus t f ok. So, now what happens is this becomes we measure the center from the bottom fiber of the bottom flange. So, this will be y centroid minus t f by 2 the whole square ok. So, that will be b f t f cube by 12 plus b f t f into h by 2 plus t f by 2 the whole square ok. So, this by simplifying we will get it as b f t f into t f square by 12 plus 1 by 4 h plus t f whole square ok. That is for the bottom flange. Now, let us do it for the web, let us do it for the web i z z about the centroid for the web plate would be 1 by 12 into T w which is the width of the plate into h cube which is the depth of the web plate ok. Now, the C g is coinciding with the C g of the web plate, C g of the cross section is coinciding with the C g of the web plate and the ends i z z about C g of the cross section for the web plate remains 1 by 12 T w into h cube ok. Now, uh, I have to do the same thing for the top plate top flange the i z z of the centroid of the top flange would be 1 by 12 b f into t f cube just like how it was for the bottom flange and i z z about the c g of the cross section for the top flange would be 1 by 12 b f t f cube plus area of top flange which is b f t f plus h plus t f h plus 2 t f. Basically what you are doing here is now we want this distance you know that this distance is y centroid. Now you want to find and this distance is T f by 2 and you are interested in finding out what this distance is. This distance would be that distance would be h plus 2 f 2 t f minus t f by 2 minus y of centroid ok. So, that will evaluate to be 1 by 12 b f t f cube plus b f t f into h plus 3 by 2 t f minus h by 2 minus t f by 2 minus t f ok. So, that is going to be nothing but same as what you got for the bottom flange which is b f t f into t f square by 12 plus h squared here squared there h plus t f by h plus t f the whole square by 4 ok. ok. So, now I have what I have to do for the entire cross section is i z z for about a c g for the cross section is I have to add all this three uh, moment of inertia of the three plates which will be 1 by 12 T w into h cube plus B f into T f is area of flange into T f square by 12 plus h plus T f square by 4 into 2 because 
I add the same thing for the top and the bottom flange. Okay. Let us simplify this further. This will be 1 by 12 h cube to T w plus I am pulling that out. So, it will be 1 plus 2 times area of flange divided by T w into h will be into 24 okay, into T f by h the whole square plus into 1 by 12 into 1 by 4 into h into 1 plus T f by h the whole square. Okay. Now, this is nothing but 1 by 12 into h cube T w into 1 plus 24 times area of flange by area of web into if I expand this I will get T f square by h the whole square into 1 by 12 plus 1 by 4 plus T f by h into 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4. Okay. Typically the thickness of the flange typically T f by h would be much lesser than 1. Okay. T f by h will be much lesser than 1 and hence I ignore the IRR terms of T f by h to get the final expression. I approximate I g g of the center of the cross section of the center of the cross section to be 1 by 12 h cube T w into 1 plus 6 times area of flange by area of web. Okay. Ignoring this is an approximate expression ignoring T f by h terms because typically the flange will be of 10 mm width or the depth of the cross section would be 300 mm. So, this is 1 by 30. Okay. So, I am ignoring 1 by 30 in comparison to 1. Okay. So, that is what I have done. Okay. So, this is the moment of inertia of the I shaped cross section. Okay. Now, what changes? All the computation that we did in the last class and in this class remain the same except that I have to use this I z z in the expression for computing delta y. Delta y as we saw in the beginning of the class will be w l power 4 by 24 e times I z z into x by l whole power 4 plus x by l to minus 2 times x by l the whole cube. Okay. So, basically delta y remains the same except that I have to use this modified expression for the moment of inertia. Similarly, sigma x x stress remains the same except that I have to use this moment of inertia instead of the moment of inertia for the rectangular section. Now, but sigma x y will vary with the depth of the cross section in a different manner because that is given by V y by I z z into B into Y s into A s. Okay. This variation not only the I z z varies even Y s into A s varies. So, in the next class what we will do is we will see how the shear stress varies in the I section. Okay. That depends upon the relative thickness of the web and the relative thickness of the flange also. Okay. So, you will see how this shear stress varies for I section and X class. Okay. We conclude here for today's lecture. Thank you.